Today we will learn about the basics of Goodwill and how it practically appears in a simple consolidation. You are watching Accounting Zero to Hero. If you have encountered IFRS 3 or IFRS 10, I'm guessing that you have heard of the term Goodwill. The objective of this video is to give an idea of what it represents in a business transaction and how it will appear in an actual consolidation that you are tasked to prepare. Let's start with the technical definition of Goodwill. According to IFRS 3 revised, Goodwill is an asset representing the future economic benefits arising from other assets acquired in a business combination that are not individually identified and separately recognized. Based on the definitions of the standard, Goodwill is measured as the difference between the consideration paid plus any non-controlling interest and the acquisition date fair value of identifiable net assets acquired. We will revisit all of these definitions later. In a common share purchase transaction where goodwill can be recognized, there are normally three parties involved. The first one is the buyer, the second one is the seller, and the third one is the business whose ownership is being bought or sold. In this transaction, we are assuming that control is being transferred and that the sale is of 100% of the shares of the business. In this situation, the buyer acquired control of the business by buying the shares held by the seller. This is effectively a shareholder transaction just between the buyer and the seller, and the business is normally not impacted in an accounting standpoint. Before the sale, the seller consolidates the business in its books, and after the sale, since there is a transfer of control or ownership, the buyer will be required to consolidate the business from the date of acquisition. In this general scenario, what are the journal entries of each party during the share purchase transaction? Assuming that all the shares of the business was acquired at 500,000 euros, the journal entry by the buyer would be a simple debit investment and subsidiary and a credit to cash for 500,000. The seller would debit the cash received and credit the carrying amount of the investment and subsidiary account and put the residuals to a gain on disposal. We will not delve more into the seller accounting because it will require more discussion about the consolidation and loss of control which will be covered in another video. The goodwill discussion will now focus on the consolidated accounting books of the buyer. Normally there will be no journal entry in the books of the business because this is purely a shareholder transaction between the buyer and the seller. The consolidated financial statements of the buyer are the financial statements that present the combined financial position, operations, and cash flows of the buyer and all its subsidiaries as if it is one single economic entity. Now, word of warning that everything after this point are simplified versions of financial statements that are normally long and complicated. This will make the concepts easier to digest. Take the balance sheet of the buyer before the purchase of the shares of the business. We already mentioned that the journal entry to record the acquisition is a debit to investment and subsidiary and a credit to cash. In order to consolidate and determine the goodwill from this transaction, we need to remember the formula we mentioned a while ago. That goodwill is the difference between the consideration paid plus any non-controlling interest and the acquisition date fair value of identifiable net assets acquired. Goodwill only arises when the consideration paid is higher than the acquired net assets. Now the consideration paid is the 500,000 we recorded in the buyer's books. For now we will ignore the NCI or the non-controlling interests because we assume a 100% acquisition. However, if you want to know more about NCI, you can watch our separate video about it. The link is in the description. What we are missing from the formula to determine the goodwill is the acquisition date fair value of the identifiable net assets acquired. Simply put, this is just the balance sheet of the business at the time of acquisition. You have to remember that net assets simply mean assets minus liabilities. Now the standard is mentioning that the balance sheet of the business should represent the fair value of the identifiable assets and liabilities. This raises some more complications in practice because this is where you can recognize additional intangible assets from the acquisition, but we will not discuss them for now. In this example, we will assume that the balance sheet or net assets we see on the screen 
represent the fair value of the identifiable assets and liabilities that the buyer paid for 500000 to the seller. This means that for the 500000 paid by the buyer, the value of the business acquired is actually only €450,000. The difference of 50000 represents the goodwill. Going back to the definitions of the standard, this 50000 is the additional asset that represents the future economic benefits arising from the other assets acquired in a business combination that are not individually identified and separately recognized. This additionally means that the buyer is paying for a premium and believes that the business is worth way more than its 450000 fair value. This balance sheet that you are seeing represents the consolidated statement of financial position of the buyer as at the date of acquisition. According to the standard, this goodwill is tested for impairment annually and is never amortized. The complete opposite of goodwill under IFRS is called the gain on bargain purchase, which arises when the consideration paid is less than the fair value of the identifiable net assets of the acquired subsidiary, and it will be discussed in a future video. As I mentioned before, this is a simplified discussion of goodwill to help you digest its nature and treatment in the consolidated financial statement. We therefore invite you to increase your curiosity on the topic by reading more about business combinations in IFRS 3, especially how the fair value of identifiable net assets are determined and what happens when the business combination is not performed at 100%. Some of these and more will be discussed in future videos. Hope you stay tuned for that. I hope you found this video super helpful. See you in the future installments of the bite-sized accounting series.